Hi, I'm Paul Pasolka, Ivy Masters Learning Center and ivymasters.com. And today we're going to look at Test 7, Section 1, Number 38, which reads, Both authors would most likely agree that the changes in gender roles that they describe would be what? Generally, paired passages disagree. It's very typical to get a question that asks how they agree. Answer choice A, part of a broad social shift towards greater equality. Are gender roles shifting? to become more equal. Let's look at the past. And we're not going to read the whole thing. We're just going to read the selection that applies to the answers here. So in passage one, we see, I've shown how democracy destroys or modifies the great inequalities which originate in society. So it looks like democracy is making things more equal. It destroys inequalities. Line six to 10. I believe that social changes which bring nearer the same level of father and the son, master and servant, superior and inferiors, generally speaking, will raise men and women and make her more the equal of men. Again, democracy, social changes, same paragraph as democracy, democracy, social changes are going to make men and women more equal. And then we'll skip over here to passage two, and we've got in lines. 46 to 53. Two persons could hardly cooperate in anything or meet in any amicable relation without the law appointing one of them should be the superior of the other. Mankind have outgrown this state and all things now tend to substitute as general principle of human relations a just equality. So it's saying that we are equal and that's more fair, that's more just instead of the dominion of the strongest. So we could see in both passages, it looks like um, the authors agree that changes in gender roles are part of a broad social shift towards greater equality, both passages. Looks like we have our answer. We're just gonna look at why the other answers are wrong. Answer choice B is not right. Unlikely to provide benefits that outweigh their costs. So one of the passages must be saying that uh, they are going to have benefits that outweigh their costs. Let's look at passage one, which, as you might have picked up, is probably going to agree with that. Passage two is more likely to disagree with that. So we've got 21 2 to 24. It may be readily conceived that thus, attempting to make one sex equal to other, both are degraded. So passage one is saying that both <clears throat> both genders are degraded when there is um, men and women are not only equal, but alike. They're degraded. And then we look at the second passage, 65 to 69. Let every occupation be open to all without favor or discouragement to any. And employments will fall into the hands of those men or women who are found by experience to be the most capable or worthy of exercising them. So in passage one, we see that the inequality is, that the equality is bad in passage two. Uh, it looks like Harriet Taylor Mill in passage two is suggesting meritocracy. The best man or woman gets the job regardless. So <clears throat> actually the first passage would say, would agree that changes in gender roles are unlikely to provide benefits that outweigh their costs. And, um, passage two would say that the changes in gender roles would be good, would be likely to provide benefits to that A outweigh their costs. So answer choice B is wrong based on passage two. Answer choice C, inevitable, which means it's definitely going to happen given the economic advantages of gender equality. So in other words, the passages would be saying, hey, if the best person gets the job, then business would be better. Um, and let's see, rather than saying, you know, man versus woman. And <clears throat> we see in line 37 to 42 in the first passage here, the Americans have applied to the sexes the great principle of political economy, which governs the manufacture of our age by carefully dividing the duties of man to that of women in order to make the work of society be better 
carried on. So it sounds like what he's saying there is that Americans have something called division of labor, where men do certain roles, women do certain, certain roles, even though we do have democracy here. And he's saying that that is an economic advantage. Let's see what passage two says, 65 to 69, which we've already read, <clears throat> that there should be meritocracy. So both passages are saying that, um, well, the, f the first passage is saying that we should have different roles for women, men and women. The second passage is saying that it should not matter. So they are saying different things. They do not agree on this point. Um, but neither of them is even saying that, hey, the passages are recognizing economic advantages and that's why they're doing it. Um, passage, the first passage does see a correlation there, but doesn't say what came first, the chicken or the egg. Answer to his D, at odds with the principles of American democracy. <clears throat> Let's see if gender roles are at odds, don't agree with the principles of American democracy. In 15 to 18 here, we have, there are people in Europe who confounding together the different characteristics of the sexes would make men and women uh, beings not only equal, but alike. And then, so that, that's what saying, he's saying is going on in Europe and he's presenting that as a bad thing that we're gonna get weak men and disorderly women. So <clears throat> move on to 29 to 42 here. Let's see, this is talking about Americans and we'll make sure we're on screen here. They admit that as nature has appointed such wide differences between the physical and moral constitution of men and women, her manifest design was to give a distinct employment to the various faculties and they hold back at the top over here. That improvement does not consist in making being so dissimilar do pretty nearly the same things, but in getting each of them to fill their respective past tasks in the best possible manner. And then it goes on to say what we've already read before is that carefully dividing duties of men to those of women in order to make the great work of society be better carried on. So again, principle of American democracy is that maybe men and Basically, it's saying in those lines that men and women have different roles. And then in the second passage, it actually does not mention American democracy. In fact, Harriet Taylor Mill, you wouldn't know this from reading the top, but Harriet Taylor Mill, who is the author of the second passage, she's British. And so we could only, if we make any assumption, we would assume that she's talking about um, gender roles in England, and not in America, uh, as it, they apply to democracy. So answer is D is wrong, not even discussed in the second passage as far as Harriet, Harriet, Harriet Taylor Mill goes. Thank you for joining us today. If you like this video, click like. You can share it with someone who has trouble with these paired passage questions. If there's any question you'd like to see answered from any official PSAT or SAT or ACT, leave that in the comments. I'd be happy to shoot a video on it. And click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Have a great day.